getting started with QGlobal Module 2. Hello and welcome to this tutorial on getting started with QGlobal. In this second module, we will talk about signing in and setting up your account. QGlobal Login. Here is the basic login page that you will see to access your Q Global account. Let me quickly point out a few things about logging in. First, you'll sign in on the right hand side of the page with the username and password you previously set up. This was demonstrated in module one of the Getting Started series. You will have the option of choosing your location and remember location if using the same computer frequently to access Q Global. Also, as you see here, there is a link if you forget your password. Step one after logging in. This is the home screen that you will see once you log in. As you can see here, there are a number of functions. I can navigate to or initiate from this home screen. Most importantly, it allows me to see a list of my examinees quickly and easily and complete several functions relating to adding new or deleting examinees, assigning new assessments, searching for specific examinees, etc. These tabs below access to functions related to group tasks and report generation. Also, as you see at the top of the screen, there are several links to manage your account, change settings, access assessment specific resources, view notifications, give feedback to us directly at Pearson, access help files regarding Q Global functions and signing out. Step two. One of the first things I may want to do as a new user is look at my settings. Here I can see a summary of key information for me as a user. One important point is the user qualification level which you see is CL1 for me. My qualification level as an account owner and manager was set following a review of my credentials when my Q Global account was started. This process is the same as it is for any purchase with Pearson Assessment. As the account owner and manager, my qualification level is important because it affects what settings I may make for other users that I add to the account and of course it also affects what measures I can actually use. If you are not familiar with our qualifications or the qualification review process, please go to our website for more information. If I wanted to make any changes to my settings, I would click the edit button. Also, you are unable to change either the qualification or role settings. In addition, I could make changes to my password from this screen by simply pressing the change password button. Step 2A. If I clicked edit on the previous screen, I would be directed to the screen you see here. I would then simply make my changes and make sure I click the save button at the end. Step three. My next step as a new account owner might be to click the manage accounts link. From here, I would now be able to see my parent account. If I wanted to review account details, I would just click on the name of the account. Also, if I wanted to add a new account, I would simply expand my parent hierarchy and click on the new account, but we will talk a little more about that in a bit. Step four. This slide shows my opened parent account and provides a summary. If I need to edit anything, I would click on the respective tab and hit the edit button when necessary. There is some scrolling involved here since there is a lot of information on the screen. On the next slide, you will see the remainder of the screen. Here is the remainder of the open parent account summary screen shown on the previous slide. Editing account details. Clicking on each tab allows you to look at each part of the summary screen in an orderly fashion. This is the link where I can edit account details. Making edits to accounts. Further down on the previous screen, there are more details shown on the account. The display settings and verification options are probably the primary options a new account owner will want to modify right away. As you can see, the system defaults to examinee and examiner, but this can be changed if you desire to respondent, for example. Verifying manually entered data can either be required, optional or turned off completely for an account. What materials? In the Portfolios and Assessments tab, 
Note that I am looking for the portfolios available on the system, although I may not own any usages yet. You are unable to edit here. This is information only. Editing account. More likely, you will want to view this tab at assessment level. If I looked at this tab by available assessments, I would see the assessments I have available within the portfolio. Clicking on the information bubble opens a new browser window with pearsonclinical.co.uk loaded. There you will be able to review the assessments and purchase additional usages. Please note it takes between 24 and 48 hours for the credits to be loaded by our customer services team. Checking inventory. On the inventory account on manage accounts we are able to see the inventory for the parent account. This is unless a sub-account has been set up for purchasing and responsible for their own inventory. Again, we will address this more a bit later. Also, there is a Buy Now button that takes you to a web page to purchase available assessments. Viewing users. The last tab shows all of my users for the account. I can add or delete users to the account here, which I will show you more of in the next slide. As you see, you have multiple views for this screen as well including user, user roles and examiner views. Adding a new user. Only an account manager can add a new user. Note that if you select a user to be an examiner here, their name will appear in a list of examiners that may be selected with default or by test record when scoring. It's important to remember that all the red asterisks are required when completing this form. Viewing user roles. Within QGlobal, there are multiple potential user roles with varying levels of permission. We will look into these in a few minutes. As you can see, an account owner may also create roles of their own with varying levels of permission. What's important to note here is that the pre-populated system roles cannot be deleted. Also, customer created roles cannot be deleted if they are already assigned a specific user. In this situation, the account owner must assign the user a new user role before the previously created role can be deleted. Creating a new role. When creating a new role, the account owner will want to think about user roles and the overall account structure carefully based on what needs to be accomplished. When a new role is created, you are able to copy privileges from another user role or simply click each role you would like the user to have. By copying privileges from an existing role, this allows you, the account owner, to easily modify privileges they want associated with the new role. Viewing examiners. Under Manage Accounts, I can also look at all of my examiners and this will become more relevant again as we look at assigned assessments. Examiners might be people who actually don't have access to the system. As you will see here in this example, this person listed as Sample Examiner is marked as No in the user column. Not all examiners will necessarily require access to QGlobal based on the structure of your setting. You are also able to add new examiners to this page. Here, you'll need to complete basic information about the examiner and click Save. Feedback. I would also like to show you the feedback function of QGlobal. This link can be used in order to directly send feedback to Pearson regarding QGlobal. In addition to the pre-populated name, email and phone number, simply fill in the type of feedback you're giving, the subject and any related comments or questions you may have. Also, you have the option to add attachments to your feedback. However, please use caution when sending any information that may contain personally identifiable information. You have reached the end of module two. I hope that this has been helpful to introduce you to some of the basic functions of QGlobal. Module three in this Getting Started series will describe how to set up a sub-account.